Welcome back, everybody, to another podcast. Today, I am joined with Denise Perry, a longtime member of Food Tribe. How you doing? Pretty good. How are you? Oh, so far, so good. If we don't have any more technical problems, we'll be doing fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't Skype that often. Sorry. <laughs> that often being I, never. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I am becoming a slow veteran at it, I guess I could say. I can tell. Yeah. If there can be uh, something better come along, I will gladly move along, but I have yet to find it. <laughs> Don't try to. Um, as you uh, as we was talking just before, um, let's start with how did you uh, find Food Tribe and how did you join um, in? I think I was on Drive Tribe first, and then and I believe I saw a post. I don't know. It was on Facebook or Instagram, maybe. I think it was James May um, said cheese or something. I don't know. He said join Food Tribe, so I did. Excuse me? Yes. There are butterflies in space. Are there butterflies what? in space? On on Columbia. Oh. Before Charter's deployment. I didn't know that. This, this is going to happen a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Hey, it's life. <laughs> uh, so I joined, uh, I know it was over two years ago because it was before my birthday. So. Oh, okay. um, Right when Food Tribe started, I guess, maybe right after, a couple weeks after. So, um, I was going to say, as far as I know, you've been there. I say you've been there as far as I, as long as I can remember. So, it's been a while. Time, yeah. 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 I didn't post as frequently at the beginning, um, but yeah, I, I ramped up pretty quick, which is amazing yes, because have. I'm a, I'm a, believe it or not, I kind of put the same stuff every Oh, yeah. week yeah so i don't know how i get away with posting the same pictures every week and nobody's caught on to that yet that's the second biggest secret on food truck <laughs> two secrets in the same week revealed yeah oh wow <laughs> yeah it's it's one of them weeks i guess it's one of the weeks <laughs> uh, people yeah like uh, i'm like a repeat offender i just cook the same stuff every week and maybe i post mm -hmm. I, I cook one new thing and um Somehow I get away with posting all the same stuff. I try to space it out maybe every, uh, maybe yeah. once a month I'll post the same picture, maybe at a different angle and hope yeah. that nobody notices. But now the cat's out of the bag and people are going to start <laughs> noticing, hey, you cooked that last week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I think there's, well, there's a few people who do, uh, Ramon, anyway, uh, <laughs> who, who eat the same thing. Um, yeah, he's... Yeah, he, he knows. Um, he's brought it up to us before. He He's that way. In um, fact, he he even eats the same thing on each day. So, like, there, I think Thursdays or Tuesdays is pizza day. Then there's spring roll day. And then there's, yeah, I mean, he eats the same food on each day. I don't do that. Like, I don't do Taco Tuesday. I do yeah. tacos, like, every week or every 10 days i might do it on a different day and then you know i'll put like a sprinkle parsley on it so it's different this week <laughs> yeah oh yeah, um, yeah I, 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 so I did bean and cheese last week i did beef the week before i do carnitas one yeah i do change them up so yeah well i i have noticed uh kind of rat you out a little bit on uh, especially the burgers uh for burger tribe you're very good with your uh mushroom swiss and your black and blues um and i was like okay these aren't the same pictures but she does yeah you do stick to basically the same ones but you make him burgers awfully well i gotta say awfully well thank you thank you my husband helps although we're doing burgers what days today tuesday doing burgers tomorrow <laughs> and, nice um but they're just going to be plain ordinary regular all-american cheeseburgers with all-american baked cheese which I heard recently, I think it was on Food Tribe, I saw that poll where they said in Britain, the Britain's favorite cheese is that American baked Velveeta cheese. Mm -hmm. And that's yep. what we're having. So hey. I guess everybody in the UK will like my burger. Yeah, well, there's still a lot of us Americans who 
are rather fond of American cheese. Um, I can't say I use it. It, melts, it melts better, I think. It does. It does. When you want that cheesy, gooey, you know, and you're going for that right picture with the, the oozing down the side, you can't beat American cheese. You can't. I've used Gouda yes. cheddars. Yeah, graphically all time. speaking, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Blue yeah. cheese I've has used... a photograph as well on a burger, but it tastes better. Oh, yes. 100%. Well, blue cheese tastes good on everything. <laughs> it does. Now, I know it John does. Coleman. I'll be doing more blue cheese next week in a, in a different meal. But... Yeah. Well, and since we're on the topic of cheese, your cheese of the week seems to be doing a lot uh, really well. I know yes, I look I forward to it. I have to slow down because I'm buying too much cheese. I'm not eating anything. <laughs> yep. So I have a fridge full of cheese and it's just sitting there. And even though yeah. I'm not buying blue cheese, it's turning into blue cheese. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I do understand that. So I, I'm having to, yeah, I, I didn't buy a whole lot of cheese this week. And I don't think I'm going to buy any cheese on Friday when I go to the store. Um, I, actually, I do have to buy blue cheese for a recipe I'm making. Um, oh boy. but yeah, I, I understand. I used to do the, um, show me your cheese drawer and I haven't done one in a long time. And now you almost get me to you where don't uh, see my cheese drawer. <laughs> I was going to say where I try, well, not too many people took me up on it. So that's why I kind of quit doing it. I was like, you know, pull out everything, all your cheeses, you know, for the cheese lovers out there. And, uh, I know ours gets really overwhelmed you to just so many different things being cooked at times it's just geez, yes. it's to be involved so it, it's a miracle that i even have cheese in here because my son's lactose intolerant and the fact that we even have cheese in the house at all of course we buy him dairy free cheese um that he okay. likes every week well I, that was another thing is he has quite is it just the glucose and and the dairy intolerance or is there more uh he can't have gluten and he can't have dairy so that makes finding restaurants almost impossible and um yeah it's been fun <laughs> okay so that's really his only two then i mean i know that's enough trust me but that's enough yeah, yeah. The, he was lactose intolerant since birth uh so we've been used to that forever now he's never been able to really have dairy uh, and the gluten thing popped up about four years ago now just one, one day he was fine next day no oh wow yeah, we can't we can't have gluten in the house at all um because what what happened was we just decided to start buying him gluten-free food but then we still had gluten uh and we thought we were diligent with cleaning turns out we weren't so we like order a pizza um, but then a little bit of pizza crust would maybe get on the countertop. And then my son would go make himself a sandwich with gluten-free bread. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe a little piece of that pizza crust would get on his sandwich and he'd get violently ill. So I said, oh, wow. Okay, just no more gluten in the house at all. We're not bringing gluten in this house in any way, shape or form. So, oh. And how, how has that changed? I well, my husband's not too happy. Uh, <laughs> so he, he sneaks out to the donut shop and I uh, uh, said, so as long as you eat it in your car, or, you know, I don't, yeah, that's fine. You, know, you can do it. Yeah. Um, I have to admit, it wasn't fun because my favorite food is gluten. <laughs> you know, I love I bread. Guess. I love pizza. I, you know, I love hamburger. I love those things. Yeah. Pretzels. I, I love all that stuff. So giving it up was not fun because gluten-free bread tastes like cardboard. I mean, literally the bag it comes in tastes better than the bread. Yeah. It's, it's awful. Um, oh, and over the last few years, I have found certain breads that taste really, really good. Right. So now I don't even notice anymore. And I found certain pastas that are really, really good. Um, yeah. So I don't notice anymore. Um, so what's the but, best brand of gluten free bread? What's your um, best or your go-to brand of gluten-free bread? It's called Char, I think it's S H S. -C. It's in the deep freeze in the, <laughs> I'd show it to you, but it's in the deep freeze. I should have gone ahead and, uh, I think it's S-C-H-A-R. 
And see, Trader Joe's makes a really nice gluten-free bread. But that one I do have. Let me get it real quick. Okay. I just thought, you know, for people out there who might be, you know, starting to yeah. deal with this or even change just life. Some problem people with just Trader Joe's gluten-free bread. Oh. It's the size of a crouton. It's I was going to say. Teeny tiny. Yeah, you you can't make a sandwich out of this. I've had sliders um, bigger than that. <laughs> yeah, it's this, and you can make finger sandwich, you know, like for afternoon tea. Um, right. It tastes delicious. It's nice for like um, I don't know, French toast or something. Also, yeah. I'll tell them about yeah. Put it down. Put it on a plate. That's cute. Can you put it on a little tiny plate for me. Um, I think it's called char bread. Yeah. Also, we have this. I'll show. He's going to see your hamburger right now. <laughs> okay. Star bread. That's really good. Sharp. And it's the size of bread. I mean, you know, it's, you can, it, it's, it's very, very good. And that's actually a really good price. $4. Wow. I, I pay about, about $6 at Walmart for it. Oh, um, wow. That's another problem with gluten-free bread. Gluten-free bread is very expensive. It's about $6 a loaf pretty much everywhere. Wow. Um, and the Walmart gluten-free bread is pretty good. It's also about six dollars. Oh wow! Okay. Um, yeah, so bread's very, very, very expensive. Um, Sounds that way. Sounds that yeah. way. But yeah, yeah you just I mean, eat bread, but... anything I have found, if you have to buy it like the gluten-free or I'm not sure what the difference is between gluten-free and like the keto bread. And even just vegan stuff is very, very expensive. And I, I don't know why, because it's just made with rice flour and it's rice. I, mean, I have I have no idea. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I know I know these allergies that suddenly pop up, like the gluten and even well, even dairy. I knew people who was fine with dairy their whole life and then one day woke up and like you said, violently ill. Um because they drink a glass of milk in the morning, something they'd done yeah. their whole life. And then the scariest one for me is poor Ramon. You know, he was fine and then his whole life up until about a year or so ago. And then he found out he had a meat allergy that was going to kill him. And I'm like, oh, no, I didn't know that was possible. You know? <laughs> yeah, that, that would terrify me. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and he said his was. Well, it just causes severe bleeding for him. And it is something that would you know, kill him. And it's like, oh, I didn't know that was possible. You know, and now I, I, I think about it and sort of shake. It's like, oh, God, please, no. <laughs> I could give up a lot of things. Yeah, because we're really into, you know, carnivorous eating. So that would, yeah, that'd be horrible. That'd be horrible. That's yes. a worst nightmare. One of my yes. best friends growing up, she was fine one day. Next day, she couldn't eat shellfish anymore. I remember thinking, oh, 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 God, I love my shellfish. No. Like, oh, that's just horrible. No, I had a friend in, in school uh, when we was in high school. She was like me. She was a dairy lover. Cheese. She'd drink a gallon of milk a day, which I do. I do that. And, you know, just, just love dairy. And literally, she got up one day to go to school, made a bowl of cereal and poured herself a glass of milk to go with it. And she was so violently ill from it. Uh, she missed school and come to find out she, in the middle of the night, her body said, nope, no more lactose. And yeah. it was like, oh. and now, and she was bad. She couldn't eat cheeses. She had to, she couldn't drink milk. And it, it, it almost killed her. I mean, it was just, wow. you know, I thought, no, you know, and she, it was horrible. I felt so bad for her. And I thought, please, Lord, don't let that happen to me. <laughs> please. I know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I. Uh, no, no, go on. Oh, no. What happened to Doug? There you are. I lost you. I have no idea what happened. Okay. I lost you. We lost uh, you. Who knows? Fair enough. Well, at least we got it back. Good. Good, good, good. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I say, the one thing I noticed 
since since I gave up gluten um, is gluten is an inflammatory food. So um, when I gave it up, my arthritis all but went away. Oh wow! Which is very very nice because at the time we lived in a two story house, and I have really bad knees. So every time I walked up the stairs, I'd moan and grunt. Oh wow! And uh, I didn't even notice I was doing it. Honestly, it was like involuntary. I'd just be like eh, 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 every time I went up the stairs. And I stopped eating the gluten, and I stopped moaning and grunting, and all my knee pain went away. Which huh. is, that's a really good uh, thing about giving up gluten. And I tell all my friends that arthritis, just give up the gluten. And they're like, no, I really like pasta too much. I guess you like pain. <laughs> there, there's yeah. another weakness, yes. Uh, <laughs> I like pasta. Um, but yeah, I... I do too, and I have a ton of gluten-free pasta in here. So. Is, it, is it any different? Yes, but like anything else, uh, after you know a couple months, you just you get over it, and you find some that are better than others. And once you find one you like, you're fine with it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, I mean, I'm sure everything's you know uh, becoming accustomed to it. You know, the more you eat it, the more yeah. you just get used to it. So, I'm sure in that regard, it ain't bad. It's just got to get past that time of getting used to it. So. Yeah, that's yeah, one of the I, easiest things to transition to is the pasta because it's really not that bad. Um, and then once you find a good bread and, and cakes are really easy because gluten free flour for cakes and sauces. That's really, really easy. Um, yeah. Trying to think, is there anything out there? Pizza has been hard. Finding a good gluten free pizza. That <laughs> one's extremely difficult. And there's lots of gluten free pizza out there. I just haven't found one of ours. Oh, okay. Now, uh, is it, you know, hard to find, like, restaurants that serve gluten-free pizza? There is a restaurant that we go to that serves gluten-free pizza, and it's okay. It's okay. And the best I can find is okay. I was going to say, it has to be extremely hard to find a gluten-free and dairy-free pizza. That would We have found it. Back. We have found it. Oh, really? That same restaurant serves gluten-free and dairy-free for him. And then, oh. uh, yeah, they have a cauliflower crust for me and then a gluten-free, because cauliflower crust has cheese in it. And then they have a regular oh, nice. gluten-free for him with the dairy-free. Um, ah. And well, then my husband nice. just gets a regular pizza and I just stare at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there's another question. Um, you know, I see a lot of the, you know, in the post you do, do you and your husband share the cooking i mean is it a, a shared process or uh on his day off he does like to cook and i end up being his sous chef or i talk him through a recipe i'll just tell him i guess i'm the executive chef in that regard i'll tell him what to do and he just kind of does it um <laughs> it just depends sometimes there's certain recipes that he just like his enchiladas he just knows those you know he knows what to do you know? and then i'm sure. his sous chef in that regard so uh. But um, otherwise, it's all me uh, on those other days. Oh, okay. Okay. I know a lot of your pictures show him doing different things, so I wasn't, I wasn't yeah. sure. So, uh, in, uh, master, so. Oh, okay. Well, hey, you know, it's nice, though, when you can, you can share things and split up the responsibility, especially on big meals. It's, it's nice. Yeah. Yeah, so. I'm very happy that he will be home on Thanksgiving because he has the kind of job where normally he isn't, and it's all me, and it's horrible. Oh, no. It's horrible oh, cooking yeah. an entire Thanksgiving meal completely by yourself with no help at all, and he's not even home on Thanksgiving, so I cook the whole thing by myself. I eat the whole oh, thing wow. by myself. I clean the whole thing up by myself. Oh, <laughs> I, oh, I give no. him a little plate when he comes home, and, you know, <laughs> and then I clean yeah. that up by myself. <laughs> Uh, but he oh, will actually no. be here not only on Thanksgiving, but I believe he'll be here the day before. I'm like, oh, you get to help me do it all. In fact, I think you can do it all. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that to you. <laughs> yeah. um, well, that, you know, that is, uh, that would be tough. I, if it come down to cooking an entire Thanksgiving meal, it'd probably be pretty slim just because it, I'm going to be the only one eating it, and I'm going to be the only one cooking it, cleaning it up. It's going to get weak quick. <laughs> yeah. 
No, no, I do the whole thing, all of it. I mean, a full spread. I do it all. And I do a big one because I like to have leftovers and then I like to take like four days off afterwards. So I, I yeah. Yeah. And there I do you the go. whole thing again for Christmas and do it again at Easter. And it's all me. Oh. And Christmas is worse because then I do cookies. I have to do cookies for William, my son, that are mm -hmm. just completely dairy free, gluten free, you know, special cookies for him. And then I do special cookies for us. And then I bake a cake. And uh, by the time Christmas rolls around, I'm like, <laughs> I just want a nap for Christmas. I don't want any gifts. I just, just a bed. That's all I want. <laughs> I, I understand. Of course, as a parent, um, well, we're empty nesters now and I've been for some time and I remember those days you get up and between running, cooking, uh, just Christmas activities as a rule, you know, gifts, the whole bit. By the time it comes around, it's like, I need, I just need to go away and hide and <laughs> recharge and, you know, hopefully by the time New Year's comes around, I'll feel like doing something, you know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I forgot about New Year's. <laughs> yeah. I was doing and, something for New Year's Eve, too. Yeah. 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 Well, honestly, yeah, us, cool. yeah, for us, New Year's has gotten really simple. Um, uh, actually, pretty lazy tech. <laughs> we don't do anything anymore. We're, we're the home, sit at home people. And, uh, we have yeah, our own. Yeah. yeah, we have our own possible little party here. Of course, there's been a few New Year's where we're in bed before midnight. We're we're getting old. It's like we're going to bed. Just... I'm I'm always in bed before midnight, but I I'm starting to wonder if that's even smart because we live in a I don't know if you're in a actual neighborhood or a subdivision, but we're in a, a subdivision where the people start um, shooting off their firecrackers at like nine thirty. Yep, and they don't stop until like two thirty. So what's the point? Yes. I might as well just sit up and watch a movie because I'm going to be up anyway. Yep. Um, we're, kind of, we're in a weird area of Austin. We're, we're outside of Austin, um, way outside of Austin. We're technically in the Austin metro area, uh, and we're in a subdivision, but it's kind of rural. So we have like a, a cattle ranch, for example, um, literally two blocks away. And so, oh, wow. so we're in a subdivision with the fireworks, but we also have some country folk who shoot off their rifles. <laughs> yep. So we have a combination of that and the firecrackers <laughs> going off. Yeah. So no one's going to sleep this one. Yeah. Uh, I used to be them country folk. Oh, <laughs> I did. Uh, but with the way uh, things are anymore, we just, we'd rather not travel anywhere. Yeah. We, so we stay home. I'm in a residential. We're in a residential section. So we we do, but we have people. Yeah, fireworks, bottle rockets, the yeah. whole bit all night long. It's just all night. all night. And well, look, we're we're roughly the same age. So you remember when we were kids, we done the same thing. And uh, I remember every year we had boxes fireworks of all kinds and we just go out we didn't stop until we set off all of them you know yeah and you can tell you're getting old when you know you think back and think, yeah we used to go out and set off big cases of fireworks every year and now now you think stop it stop it people's trying to go to bed you know <laughs> it's just it's yeah. like oh god i'm getting old i'm getting old you know so yeah well, you know you're getting old when, okay, I have a kid, a fairly young child who can sleep through anything. Uh, my dog yep. is deaf, so he can sleep through it. <laughs> my husband has to get up and be at work at like 6 in the morning. But, you know, I'm at that age where I can't sleep through fireworks. They it's just getting harder. me now. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. just, so I'm just like, just please stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, do. it's fine you do them at midnight, but can't you just stop at like 1? <laughs> yeah. We need sleep. We need sleep. Um, and if my if my wife has to go in early, that is horrible because we're up at three thirty in the morning, and it's yeah, like wow. Oh. That's when they stop. <laughs> so. Yeah, you know they'll stop at like two forty five or three o'clock, and it's like oh come on. <laughs> you know? 
we and then we have one guy across the street. He his son's. Well, 4th of July is rough because his son's birthday is 4th of July. So it is fireworks all night long and loud music the whole bit all night. And it's like, of course, in the July, oh. he has every window in the house open. So you hear, oh. stop, please. <laughs> stop. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So. It, it's, we don't have a birthday that I'm aware of. But Fourth of July is the exact same thing here with the fireworks mm -hmm. starting at like nine, ending at three. Yeah, yeah. and I'm the one, yeah, I'm the I'm the uh, patriotic one. I love fireworks and all that. But at two thirty in the morning, three in the morning, stop! Ain't no one up trying to watch them yeah. anyway. <laughs> well, the only people up trying to watch them is too drunk to see them anyway. So stop. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Uh, is it any, I, okay, let's get into, you, you said you've lived in Florida, Ohio, and now, and now Texas. Where was oh, you actually? I'm from going? Florida, I'm from Miami, and then I went to the University of Alabama, so I lived in Tuscaloosa, I lived in Birmingham, then I moved oh, to wow. here, yeah, then I moved to Austin, then we moved to Nashville, then we moved to Ohio, we lived in Cincinnati, and then we lived in Dayton, and then wow. we moved to San Antonio, and then we just moved here. Back to Austin. So, wow, I thought I've been around. <laughs> Gee, <to> be Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've only been to Miami once. I won't do it again. <laughs> do it again. Um, you either, that, you either like it or you don't. You know. Yeah, I I was down. Well, I was down there as a young kid, and yeah, that probably didn't help. Um, yeah, Is that I was down there. Oyster? No, actually, I was here in Ohio. Um, yeah, I had a step. My grandma was seeing somebody at the time. Let's put it that way. And his thing was, you know, he loved oysters. And he was trying to get me to eat them. And he done them all kinds of ways. And uh, he said, you know, just, you know, open them up and break them loose. And he's just, just slurp them down. Mm, okay, you know. Look, I've ate a lot of things in my life, but as a child, I looked at that one going, this don't look right. <laughs> so, and he was to put a little hot sauce or something like that on them and, and down they go. Yeah. And I tried it and I couldn't decide. I was like, they're kind of slimy. And that was one of the worst things. Yeah, yeah they're um, definitely slimy, but they just taste like, I don't know, salt, brine. You know, they're just very, mm -hmm. very, so, and then depending on whatever you put on them. Yeah, uh, I, I had had them with the hot sauce, and that was fine. Um, the I had them with uh, some lemon juice and a little salt and stuff like that, and that was okay. I think it was just the texture. Mm -hmm. uh, as I got older, uh, I got deep-fried oysters, and that was it. I'm a deep-fried oyster person. Please, just deep-fry them. Just <laughs> Uh, they remind me of deep fried yeah, mushrooms. I don't think I'll be doing that anymore, but yeah, I've had deep fried oysters again. Oh yeah, not your not your thing, huh? Well, no, I can't. I just can't. I mean, unless I make them myself, you know. But that's oh. what we get here in Texas mostly is deep fried oysters. Yeah. Oh okay, okay. That makes that makes a little more sense. Okay. So yeah, I, I'm not against them. Um, I just never could. I think it was just that texture thing I couldn't get. Back. So, but once yeah. you fry them, they they firm up and and get a little more texture to them, and I'm fine with that. So, yeah. But yeah, deep fried eggs are pretty good. That, that's true. That's that's true. Uh, <laughs> definitely. That I know though that uh, layout you had for your birthday of seafood looked fantastic. That, yeah, that was, that was fun. Um, and I. I think I mentioned it in the post that the hardest part for the birthday was trying to find where to go because it's so hard to find a restaurant. We can only, we only go to two rest restaurants that all three of us can eat at um, right. with, with the food allergies and pretty much any Mexican restaurant we can go to because Me Mexican food is naturally gluten free with the corn tortillas. Um, right. And you just order your taco with no cheese, and then he's good to go. 
so that's usually where we go. We usually go to Mexican restaurants. Uh, with no problem. But I don't want to go to the same place I always go to. Yeah, yeah I get that. <laughs> um, get and that. then um, the other place we used to frequent was a wings joint, but um, wings place prices have way inflated uh, because of a wing shortage or something. And I, 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 I know Roosters is probably still okay, but they're mm -hmm. charging a lot of money for wings at our wings place. So we, I said, I want to pay a hundred dollars for wings. Uh, wow. But normally, yeah. Wow. For like three of us to go for wings, because they charge extra for the fries, and then a couple of beers is like 12, 13 bucks. Yeah. Um. And plus the wings place that we go to, it's about 35 miles away. So they got gas and it's on a toll road. So you got tolls and it's like, oh, oh my wings. Goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, we can just do those. Wow. Ah. <laughs> right. I was going to say buy the big frozen bag of them. And go again. Yeah. Um, they charge for the blue cheese. And it's like, uh, wow. so I just surfed the internet for hours trying to find a place that we could go and then when I found this place now my son he could eat there technically because it's grilled seafood there's no gluten in it but he does not like seafood but it was right next door to the pizza restaurant that I was telling you about that has the gluten-free pizza and the dairy-free pizza oh so we just I swung by picked him up a pizza and we are not above walking into a restaurant with a pizza mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, hey, you gotta um, do what you gotta do, you know. You gotta do what you got, yeah. Um, so they kind of gave us a look when we walked in, like, why's your kid got a pizza? But they didn't say anything, so. And it was a fairly <laughs> casual place. It, it wasn't, um, you know, extremely, you didn't have to get all dressed up or anything, you know. So, That's yeah, we just walked in. The waitress, was, the waitress was very uh, knowledgeable. She was very friendly. Um, service was great, and... So the seafood tower we ordered, it came with mussels, which we both hate. Came with a couple other things that we weren't into. And the waitress said, no, 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 you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You can do a la carte. I recommend these kind of oysters. I recommend, oh, you said you like stone crab? Well, put some extra stone crab on there. I'm like, okay. Excellent. Yep. So that's what we did. I, I love crab legs. Um, I, I will buy them anytime I can get them. But I am an absolute knucklehead when it comes to trying to break him suckers open. I <laughs> just, I'm horrible at it. It's like I end up just slaughtering this leg of crab, and it's like picking through the shell and the meat at the same time. And it's just, I'm, I'm I don't know why. I just, I'm horrible at it, but I do love it. I do. There, there's an art to it. Again, being from Florida, not that stone crab. I mean, stone crab is indigenous to Florida and the Caribbean, but. Uh, a snow crab and Alaska king crab, obviously not from Florida, but we get them there all the time. So I grew up eating that stuff. I I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> There's this place called, uh, oh, no, I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but I used to go there a lot uh, when I lived in Florida. And they had these big, long wooden tables, and they'd bring out your crab, and they gave you a hammer. You mm -hmm. could knock a Oh, there if you had a headache let's put it that way because you just walk in and just, <laughs> bam, 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 bam. <laughs> everybody just bam, bam, bam. And you, <laughs> say sounds like drum solos the living daylights out of your crab legs and yeah uh, they didn't give you those things they gave you hammers and yeah and it was really fun as a kid because you would just smack you know yep yeah yeah I, i've been to the places where they give you like the, the nutcracker style where you just squeeze it you yeah. know and and those are fine. The hammers are a bit crude, but yeah. Um, They're very efficient. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, they are. Uh, then they give you the little forks. You're supposed to. Yes. And what happens with me is now my wife is perfect. She'll crack a thing, stick her little fork in there, and pull out the whole piece. I'm the one who it, it comes out in little slivers. And then I got to recrack the shell off, pick the fork. Oh. I don't know why. After all, of them, <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> There's been a many times I've just slid my plate, going, "Please, please help me, <laughs> just please." <laughs> um. Yeah. I, I. I. don't know why I am so horrible at that. But 
uh, living in Florida. It's practice. It, there's an art to it. I don't know. It's, yeah. If so, I haven't. I haven't learned it. it uh, being from Florida, have you ate much alligator? You eat alligator? The irony is, I I didn't eat a whole lot of alligator when I lived in Florida. But, uh, I started eating alligator, I guess, when I was a younger adult. But I've eaten far more alligator here in Texas. Really? Yeah. That's shocking. It's very very popular here. Yeah. Huh. That's shocking. I, I also, I it's a myth. Uh, I also have never seen an alligator, uh, except when I went on a field trip to the Everglades, and then I saw an alligator. But uh, I never saw an alligator, like, uh, walking out of the shopping center or, or in my backyard or something like that. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Um, I had a uh, alligator about 20 years ago, 19, 20 years ago. Uh, and that was the first time I had had it. We went to vacation down in Ormond, Daytona area. And there was a little place down there called Barnacles. And we went into there and they had fried alligator on the menu. And I was like, I have to try that. And I was in love. Oh, it was so good. And I thought being from Ohio, you know, alligators aren't real readily available up here. Um, <laughs> and, but believe yeah. it or not, occasionally, occasionally we'll find it in the uh, frozen meat section. They'll have, you know, you can buy it. And yeah. So, so. I guess I never thought to look for it at Jungle Gyms, but I guess if anybody would have it, it would be them on occasion. Or oh, maybe... I would. Uh, Papados might have, Papados definitely has it. There's a Papados in Cincinnati. That's I have not heard of Papados. Yeah, it's a Cajun restaurant. Um, they serve alligator. Oh, well, that would make sense. And they serve all kinds of oysters. So Ah, nice. Uh, I've never looked for alligator. Now I can't think of, maybe I have. Alligator at, uh, yeah, Jungle Gyms. I almost said Trader Joe's. We don't, I don't even know if we have one of those. Uh, Jungle Gyms uh, here. You have a Trader Joe's in Dayton, and you, I'm sure you have one in Cincinnati, but, um, and you definitely have them in Columbus, because I've been to the one, I live in Dayton, and I used to go there, and I've definitely been to the one in Columbus. I think it's near Polaris Mall or something, yeah. Oh, okay. See, Polaris Mall is quite a ride for us to get to there. That's, that's what, north, northern Columbus, isn't it? North side of Columbus? Yeah, yeah, northern, yeah. See, it's so weird to get to talk to somebody on here who knows where I'm talking about. You know? <laughs> um, now, Jungle Gyms, I can be, we can be there in a little over an hour. Just, yeah, just touch over an hour. Okay. So that's not, not terrible. And really, it would be quicker, but once you, well, you, as you know, you, once you break into that Cincinnati, this Cincinnati area, uh, traffic gets a bit worse. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Here, um, here to Cincinnati. Way. Airfield, and there's no real good way to get there. It's kind of in a weird location for being such a tourist attraction. For those of you who don't know, Jungle Gems is this tourist attraction grocery store. And um, when everybody would come to visit me in Ohio, friends and family, I would say, the first place I'm taking you is Jungle Gems. And they'd say, why do I want to go to a grocery store? I don't even <laughs> like doing that at home. And I'd say, too bad, I'm taking you to Jungle Gyms. And they'd fight me the whole way there. Like, I don't want to go to a grocery store. Can't we, can't we like, go to Amish country? I'm like, no, that's five hours away. You're going to Jungle Gyms. And we'd pull into the parking lot. And the second we pulled in the parking lot, they'd be like, <gasps> yep. this is like Disney World. I'm like, I know. It is like <laughs> Disney World. And we're just in the parking lot. Yeah. And the parking lot, I mean, it doesn't matter what day you go. It doesn't matter what time you go. It doesn't matter. Our time of year you go, you're not going to find a parking space. You're just not. You're going to uh, drive. So be prepared to walk like 40 miles before you even get <laughs> in to Jungle Gyms, which yep. started as a fruit stand, I believe, in 1970 or something. And oh, okay. yeah. it's massive. I can't tell you the square footage, like the size of two or three Costco's or something. It's huge. And when you walk in, I, it's been well, seven years since I've been, because that's when we moved. Uh, you walk into kind of the meat and cheese section. It's called mm -hmm. the Big Cheese, and they have 
the big cheese and it's the mm -hmm. biggest cheese section you've ever seen in your life. Amen. And they have <laughs> every cheese. Look, if they don't carry it, it's they don't make it, basically. It don't exist, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Uh, and it's the, like, gourmet meat section, like the deli meats and prosciuttos and parma hams and any kind of meat you can think of. And they get, well, this is pre-COVID, obviously, samples. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. All the bars and all yes. that kind of stuff. And I, oh, and they sold, they were notorious for this the pig's heads, whole mm -hmm. pig's heads. And people love seeing those. Like everybody would say, and I always said, don't photograph the pig's head. Everybody photographs the pig's heads. Mm -hmm. And they're only $5. And everybody asks, what do you do with the pig's head? I'm like, well, you, you, you put it in, I don't know, stews and stuff. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Oh, with you can roast head. it for that matter, you know. I guess roast you can roast it. Get, I am from Miami yeah. where people roast whole hogs and they always roast it with the pig's head and they eat the snouts and mm -hmm. they eat everything. Yeah. The ears. Eat the, che the cheeks. The and, cheek. Yeah. That's the guan yep. chali, I think it is. Use it for um, yep. Jaw. pastas and stuff. And carbonara is made with guan chali. Uh, yeah. so, and then back behind the cheese is this huge beer and wine section. They sell <laughs> every kind of wine, every kind of <laughs> beer. Again, if if they don't have it, it's because they don't make it. You can spend five hours um, walking around their beer and wine section and not see it all. No way. You, you could. I think they even had a cigar section, if I remember correctly. I could I be didn't making that up, up, but I think they have one. They um, probably do. They probably do, yeah. Good shock, man. Uh, then, then comes the bathroom. <laughs> and they won, I believe, Bathroom of the Year Award, which now I think Bucky is one but back then they won it and people are always confused and i loved confusing people where's the bathroom and i point and i go and they go no really where's the bathroom and i point yeah and they, they have some interesting no, seriously and i'm like that's the bathroom what do you i'm not making it up it's an outhouse yes. <laughs> no it's not an outhouse it's a porta potty it's a porta potty mm -hmm. and they'd be yeah. like i'm not going in there i'm like no seriously go in there and they'd be yeah. like they why are you door. kidding i'm like i'm not kidding <laughs> you open the door to the porta potty, and inside is a huge, huge bathroom with like twenty stalls. And it's a joke that it's a porta potty, but it's an actual bathroom. Their their um, bathroom is bigger than some stores I've been in. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Um, yeah. I what she said after, before... after that was the seafood. Oh no, after that was the produce. Mm -hmm. And they had Asian produce, the best Asian produce market you could find mm -hmm. um and any kind of produce you can imagine uh, it, just yeah. massive beautiful produce section and then behind that was the seafood and they had and tanks. let's i've been i've been what to aquariums i've been to aquariums that didn't have as much fish as they do and yeah. going to their fish section is like going to an aquarium because there are massive massive tanks with all kinds of fish, crabs, all kinds of lobster. Fish. Yeah. And it's all alive and, you know, doing fishy you things. Up right there. And you say, I want that one. And yeah. the monger comes out and takes the fish, like fish is for it, takes the fish and then uh, I guess they'll fillet it for you if you want. We never did it. Or they give it yeah. to you whole and you could clean it yourself if you want. And then mm -hmm. they had just a regular seafood section with already cleaned fish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know there's there's one aquarium in there that is so massive, there's a walkway around the top of it, a catwalk, and they walk around with the big yeah. nets, scoop it up, and it's like, I don't know how many thousands of cat was that is. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. And, and I love that. After all that, there's even more, because then there's the international food section. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's this huge Robin Hood over the English aisle, and it had a <laughs> All the English, it had your Cadbury candy bars, it had mm -hmm. mince pies, it had pork pies. I bought a uh, English pasty there once. It was delicious. There's mm. the Polish Isle. Uh, there's, well, every country imaginable. France, Germany, Israel, Italy, it's, all of every country you can think of. And it's all listed by countries. You go to that yeah. section. And we, being, my wife being of Thai descent, we rarely get out of the tie section <laughs> just, we stay right yeah. in that area because 
and it's not just a little section. I mean, these sections are are large. You know, many many aisles worth of food that are very long. You know, it takes a, a while. It's one aisle. It's multiple aisles. Yeah, and these aisles are no joke. They, they to walk to the end of them is is a journey. I mean, it's it's a long way, uh, and it they they make Sam's Club look pitiful. Uh, you go in there and. <laughs> You know, you go to like your Kroger's or your local grocery store and you buy these little like two pound or three pound bags of rice and that's considered something. There you can go and buy hundred pound bag of rice. I mean, yeah. And they got skids of them. I mean, skids of yeah. them, of every every feasible rice in the world. It, oh, all kinds of rice. And that's just in the Thai section. Then they have an Indian section with more mm -hmm. rice. They yep. have a Chinese it, it, section with more rice. But then you go over into the Mexican section, and it's a whole other set of rice. And you're like, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, and, and then they have coolers with all kinds of burritos and, and all kinds of <laughs> Goya products. And yeah. Yep. Uh, the uh, interesting thing about the Thai section is we only just recently finished our Thai chili oil from seven years ago, the last time we shopped there. <laughs> it takes a long time to go through Thai chili oil, and it doesn't expire. Really. It doesn't trust me, and we had to go online to Amazon to rebuy it because they don't sell it here. Oh wow! See, we, we make everywhere. Yeah, my wife makes her own. You know, uh, I figured was... you probably could make your own. Yeah, but we were in a pinch and we needed it, and we needed it kind of like I was going to make a Thai dish, and uh, it didn't turn out. That's why <laughs> I didn't photograph it, but we still needed the oil. Uh, it turned yeah, out kind of disastrous dish I made because I bought the wrong coconut cream. I bought sweetened, and it's but it turned it out like <laughs> it turned out way too sweet. Instead of just buying yep. regular coconut milk, I accidentally bought sweetened coconut cream. So the whole dish turned out. But, but anyway, yeah. So the Thai chili. Well, that's as well. that's why we have food fails. You could have put it over there. So. You could have. You're right. You could take a picture of me going <laughs> when I tasted it. Uh, but yeah, the Mexican aisle, the the Italian aisle, and you have all those aisles. And then after that, there's an actual grocery store mm -hmm. for regular. Toilet paper, soap. If you want just regular American pasta, I don't know why you'd want that. Why don't you just go to the Italian section? That's what we did to buy yep. Italian pasta. But you know, all that right potato chips. Again, why would you buy Lay's? We could buy Walkers. They're the same thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, I know yes. one of the biggest surprises for us. One of the first times we went, uh, we was walking through and. Well, for people who don't know, the ceilings in this place are huge. They're enormous. And then, like, toward the middle of the store, I seen a full, full blown, full size fire truck hanging in the ceiling, just there. Yes. And that whole area, look, there again, the size of most normal stores is a hot, just hot sauce. Just hot sauce. Nothing else. Oh, yeah. Hot sauce. And any kind of hot, Chili powder, anything you want. Not counting what's over in, like she said, the the areas of like you know for specific countries. This is just everything in one area. And I mean, I spent probably two at uh, two and a half hours wandering the hot sauce section, just going, "Oh my gosh, are you sick?" And then you'd walk around the corner, and there's a whole other section of hot sauce. You're like, yeah. it never stops. It just never stops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, uh, it's one of them places to sum it up if you really want to see the entire store get up there first thing in the morning you'll oh, probably well, have, right at eight yeah yeah get there when they first open spend that day and then leave go get something to eat rent a room bed and breakfast hotel room and then go back eight o'clock in the morning and you might get through it all you might get through all yeah <laughs> Um, they, cause we they went they, so many times that we, we kind of knew the whole footprint, the whole layout that after a while we're like, okay, I'm going here, I'm going here, I'm going here, I'm going here, and I'm getting out. Cause there are tour buses there. People come from out of state on tour buses. <laughs> That's why you can never find a parking space. That place. And if you go like at two o'clock on a Saturday, forget it. Um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it, it's crazy. You might have a chance on like a Tuesday, maybe a Wednesday, maybe, maybe. Yeah. At eight in the morning. Yeah. yeah, um, you know, uh, that's when we usually go. We try to leave 
try to early in the morning. You know, it's a journey for us. So if we get there by 11, usually you're kind of okay, but you're going to drive around the parking lot for a bit looking for a spot. And, you know, mm-hmm. now we've been, been there a few times. We kind of know our way around. But if you have never been there, never been there, get a hotel room in, in that area. <laughs> Plan on spending two days walking this store. And she's she's not lying. It is literally like a tourist attraction because you can get lost in the seafood section just watching fish like an aquarium. Like you would go to enjoy and you sit there and go, what kind of fish is that? You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know what? Again, I haven't lived there in a while. I don't know if Papa Do's is even still open, but it wasn't terribly, terribly far from the Papa Do's. Huh. I'll have to look that up. See if I it's think the Papa Do's, again, I could be totally wrong. The Papa Do's was off 275 in Fairfield, and this is in Fairfield. So, okay. Uh, if, if it's still open, they're, they're 10 minutes from each other, if memory serves. I Usually we go there. Um, we go there, and that's it. Well, if we go to make a trip to Jungle Gems, there's three places we have to stop. Jungle Gems, but on the way is there's a huge Bass Pro. About in 15 minutes. Uh, yes, that was the only Bass Pro last time when I lived there, and yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's a big one. It's two or three stories. Yeah. And it's it's big. Mm-hmm. I we love going in there because me and my wife are outdoors people. And then just as you go into Cincinnati, in the middle of the industrial area, uh, it's it's so weird. It looks so out of place, but tucked back a little lane uh, between, I think it's an asphalt company and a gravel pit and concrete company. There's a little tiny freedom store. Yeah, yeah, we'll call it that. And uh, we go there, and we love that little place. And we'll spend some time there, Bass Pro, and then go to Jungle Gyms. Of course, after you leave Jungle Gyms, it's you got to get home because usually you have all kinds of refrigerated food, frozen food. So after that, it's just a hot trip home. When we lived in Cincinnati, it wasn't that big of a deal. After we moved to Dayton, we'd have to bring a cooler mm-hmm. to anything yep. cold. And we even do that here in Texas because it's so hot. Yes. Um, we have the cold bags in our car, even though the grocery store is only 20. Well, the grocery store I like is 20 minutes away. I put everything in my cold bags before I come home because it could be you know, 110 degrees. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I always have a, a cold bag in my car. Always. I, I couldn't. That's I couldn't. something I miss about Ohio because in the winter when it's freezing cold, I could still run errands after I did grocery shopping. and I have to worry about my groceries. Yep. They'd stay nice yep. and cold in my car. You know, yep, especially if you put them in the trunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, because you, you've lived in some pretty diverse areas. You know, winters aren't common in Miami. Um, there is no such thing as winter. What we considered uh-uh. winter was 70 degrees. And I'm not, because we didn't own pants. We don't own long sleeve shirts. We just don't. Um, yeah. So when it dipped to 70, we would start freezing to death. And my teeth would chatter. And I'm not <laughs> exaggerating. That's a real thing. No, I, I would literally I, start freezing. Yeah. I, re- I remember many a trip. My See, my mom grew up in Daytona. And so okay. we, would go, we would go to Daytona on a, about every year, sometimes a couple times. And she'd go back down there and revisit the old neighborhood and just, just enjoy being in Daytona again. And we would always go in the off season, which is like November through February, part of March. Yeah. That's okay. your off season. Yeah. Well, now Daytona is a little out. chillier than Miami. It could probably yeah. even get into the 60s. Yes, it did. And it would be like 60, 65 degrees. And I'd be in the pool, you know, swimming around. And Floridians would come up to you in coats, toboggans, gloves. And they're like, you ain't from around here, are you? <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. I'm out there shirtless, you know. Swim trunks on, swim and enjoy the water, and they're walking around gloves and coats and you know hoods up and toboggans, and I'm like, "Are you serious?" You know, and I'm out, I'm around. You know, it's like it's yep. so funny the difference. It really is. Uh-oh. The day we moved back to Texas, we moved in on January second during a polar nope. vortex. It was minus <laughs> one the day we moved with like like 30, 40 mile per hour winds. So oh yeah. It was the coldest weather we'd ever felt. 
The whole time we lived in Ohio was the day we moved. Moved to wow. San Antonio. It was 62 degrees, I think. And I oh. had on a tank top and shorts. I went to register our son at school. I put him in uh, a short sleeve shirt and some shorts. <laughs> and we're walking into the school everybody is bundled they have on like earmuffs they have on like scarves and <laughs> someone literally walked up and did the same thing to us you're not from around here are you like no we just moved here from Ohio they're like yeah okay and they said give it a year and you're going to be dressed like us and sure enough yeah a year later it was like 60 degrees I'm like oh my god I'm so cold I'm so cold <laughs> <laughs> you, you see you'd die coming back to Ohio then during the winter it'd just be too rough on you so, yeah, we had a winter here last year. I mean, it, we had I a heard. storm with ice this thick. Mm -hmm. um, it was, it wasn't that cold. It wasn't like minus one, but it got down to about 20, and I thought I was going to die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, I know that was quite a thing last year with, with that because some Texans were actually getting scared because they hadn't, well, they've never experienced anything like yeah. that. Yeah. And, you know, power outages were becoming very, very common, and you know, we then people. Power, just, we only lost it for about six hours. Yeah. Oh, that's that's nothing. That's what? Argonauts? Uh, what? Argonauts? We just read about Jason and the Argonauts in class the other day. That's the name of his boat, the Argo. And Argo's also a movie. Well, yeah, I. Yeah, I think there's some shuttles and fighters named after that. Yep, they're named after Jason and the Argonauts and his ship. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm so uncomfortable. With what? Drink some water. <laughs> it's my answer for everything. Drink some water. There you go. There you go. Sounds like a good mom he answer. Drink water. He needs to drink more water. Um, I I didn't realize how important that was until a few years ago, and I drink a lot of water now. I, I only drink water. Well, yeah, a little bit of alcohol, but yeah, I don't drink cokes or anything like that. Yeah, uh, you gotta have your mommy juice, you know. <laughs> it's what makes it all possible. <laughs> um, yeah. I I always refer back to the uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the um, the uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. And Chevy Chase asked his dad, he goes, how did you make it? And how did you do it all them Christmases? And he said, I had a lot of help from Jack Daniels. You know, it's like, hey, sometimes you got to do what you got to do, you know. <laughs> just, yeah. Oh, parents got to keep their sanity somehow anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they, they when that cold spell hit, uh, there was a lot of people in a lot of bad ways. And, and one of the things I guess we take for granted is people just didn't even know how to drive with ice on the road. And it was just, yeah. which is funny for some of these other countries that, you know, when they get that way and well, Florida, occasionally they'll get a dusting of snow and people freak out, just freak out. Oh, no, shut whole cities down. And we're like, uh, all of Texas shut down. Uh, my husband still had to go to work, and he was the only one. He, there were 400 employees, I think, where he worked, and it was mm -hmm. him and eight other people that showed up to work. Wow. And wow. he's like, oh, he, he learned how to drive in Ohio on ice. Yeah. He, had a little toy, he has a little Toyota Camry. <laughs> and we had, had, I think, 20 inches of snow on four inches of ice. Wow. And he made it work. His boss was from Minnesota. He doesn't work there anymore. And she didn't even come in. I'm like, okay, she has no excuse. I, I don't know. I, I think wow. I like, um, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. figured it out real quick. I don't know. I never had any problems in Ohio. Uh, I had a little Saturn, like uh, one inch oh. off the ground. And I yep. just figured it out. I mean, again, you know, Miami, we have torrential rain where you can't see a thing and you hydroplane everywhere. And mm -hmm. Snow is very slippery, so I, I don't know. Maybe I just know to take it really slow and stuff. Um, yeah. But we did have an experience. It was in Valentine's Day. I think we'd lived there two years where we were uh, trying to go up and on ramp, but instead we went down sideways. <laughs> oh, no. Um, yeah. All the way down, completely sideways. We didn't hit oh. anything though, and there were cars all around us. We didn't hit the oh, barrier. Wow. We didn't hit a car. 
we made it all the way down completely sideways and then somehow we made it all the way back up I, that was the, the worst thing that ever happened oh there was one time we were on our way to jungle gyms actually in a <laughs> storm because we're crazy and we did a 360 on the highway and somehow we we were fine yeah uh, but yep. we never had a, a crash or anything in the snow the whole time we lived there we just figured it out yeah um I've only been in one accident in snow, uh, and I wasn't. I of course wasn't driving. Uh, my ex, my ex wife was, and it was just one of. I don't know. if She wasn't a good driver to begin with, but anyway, uh, just you know, hit the brakes, but you just keep on going, just keep on going, and we we slid a ways. I mean, she stopped kind of far enough away. Uh, I yeah. thought you know should be fine, and. Of course, you're still sliding, and a Cadillac come out in front of us and just T-boned it perfectly, just, oh, you know. Wow. And it was like, oh, okay, you know. Uh, that's been the closest, but like I said, I wasn't driving, but, you know, it was. It's still scary. Yeah, and, and the fact is, is, you know, if you haven't drove on really bad snow and ice, it, it can mess with you. A lot more than people mm-hmm. think, but if you're, if you're careful and you're safe and have a decent car okay that that's half of it um there's most of the people i see the trunk down or weigh the bed down Um, we learned that one real quick that day we did 360 we didn't have trunk the truck yeah weighed down we didn't know nobody told us and then we figured it out like oh we gotta get some sandbags or something and then once we figured that out everything was fine (laughs) oh and tires makes a huge difference Um, yeah good tires yeah the, the people I see having the most problems here is the people who's out here in their little, you know, 1989 Honda Civic with four different color fenders and two donut tires in opposite corners and the trash bag across the back window. And they're just all over the place, just all over yeah. the place, you know. And it's like, come on, people, <laughs> at least get the same size tires on all four corners. It helps. It really does, you know. Uh, and that snow is really going to uh, break your garbage bag. Yeah. And, and you know, and they got so many clothes on because the heater don't work. The windows are busted out of the car. And you're like, come on. You know? <laughs> yeah. um, but honestly, the, the most scary people I have found in bad weather like that is those who have nice four-wheel drive systems, your Jeeps, your Toyotas, good four-wheel drives. They got the full kitted out. It, you know, you think, okay, they off-road this thing. And no, they have no idea. They've built it to drive around their cul-de-sac and look good. And then when the weather gets bad, they have no idea how to drive it in bad weather. And those are the ones that end up backwards at a stop sign or in people's yards. And, you know, or they're just all over the road because they have no idea what to do. I have found yeah, those. Just, they're driving reckless. They're dri- they think, oh, I have a four-wheel drive. I can do whatever I want. I see that exactly. here, especially in the rain. I'm like, you still can't drive 100 miles per hour. Yeah. Well, and four-wheel drive don't help you stop. Don't help you stop at all. Yeah. It still breaks. So that's that's it. And often that's the case. You'll see them, you know, they got these lifted with, you know, off-road tires on it, coming up to a stop sign or stoplight, and they just hit the brakes like they would on a nice, dry, sunny day, thinking, I'm fine. And then they're sideways going through the intersection. And, you know, you're like, really? you know so and you feel like doing the floridian thing is you're not from around here are you you know <laughs> if you grew up here you would know better than that yeah so oh um well-